Hello everyone. Today I'm going to present a paper on CTBus platform. So my topic is for today is uh, to evaluate various metastatic patterns involved in carcinoma ovary. My co-author is Dr. Gitanjali Sapapati. She is a professor at Kim's. So I'll, I'll be starting and dealing with this topic today. Now, um, the contents of this uh, study was uh, will include the aims and objectives, the materials and methods used, the cases which we studied and the results and their conclusion as well. So now coming to introduction, we as we all know, in ovarian cancer is one of the most common gynecologic malignancy and uh, one of the leading causes of death in women. So epithelial ovarian ca carcinoma represents the most fatal gynecologic malignancy in women. Now after all this early detection and improving response rates, still majority of women uh, they present with disseminated disease at initial diagnosis. And again, after surgery or chemotherapy, there's always a relapse rate and of, uh, relapse is around 85% and overall survival after the relapse is around five uh, around five years survival will be 20 to 30%. So ovarian carcinoma is still a disease that uh, mostly relapses with multiple episodes even after various uh, treatments. Metastasis are outside the peritoneal cavity and abdominal pelvic lymphodes are very rare at presentation, but they are comparatively increasing nowadays. Now, when we see the roots of spread, so we have diaphragmatic surface, we have liver surface, so it spreads through a mental lymphatogenous spread, blood spread, so it spreads to liver surface, it can spread to mesentery, rectal uterine pouch, and paracolic gutters, bowel surface as well, mental deposits, so it can spread to greater, greater momentum. It can be form of necrotic lymph nodes or deposits or mets in the foreign liver. So aims and objectives of this study were to evaluate various sites of metastasis involved in relapsed ovarian carcinoma. So to study the role of but uh, CT imaging in evaluating the metastatic patterns involved in relapse ovarian carcinoma. So to compare the results of study with similar studies available in the present literature and the, in the books. Now the materials which we used are, we did a retrospective study from September 23 to September 24. Now the size of samples taken were 30 patients. The inclusion criteria was uh, all the patients with uh, positive diagnosis of ovarian malignancy who have undergone some, some form, any form of primary treatment, either surgery or chemotherapy, and they've relapsed. Okay. Now, exclusion criteria with was any coexisting malignancy or any persistent ovarian malignancy. They were excluded for the study purpose. Now, observations were uh, all the criteria which were evaluated: the site, the age, the histopathological findings with the nodal involvement, and extraperitoneal or uh, versus intraperitoneal involvement, recurrence lesion, recurrence with or without lymph nodes, the number of sites, association, and uh, the amount of ascites as well. Type of primary treatment was which was given and surgery along with chemotherapy. Now, first case, first case we see here. So first case we found out there was aorto uh, association with necrotic component we can see here. So uh, along with this, some lymph nodes were also found. Case two, we come here. So when you see this cases, you find a diffuse involvement throughout the body. It can be form of the nodal deposits, the, uh, the peritoneal or mesenteric deposits, the nodal involvements. Second case we found there is by a uh, hilar and mediastinal lymphadenopathy. And here we can see there is hilar and uh, this mediastinal lymphadenopathy and uh, pretracheal involvement also, also there. Case 3. Now this case was a typical case. Almost we found everything over here. So uh, the sites the sites of recurrence were like the we found there were multiple peritoneal deposits with retroperitoneal lymph nodes as well. And peritoneal thickening was seen on the liver surface. We could see uh, so many deposits and uh, malignant kind of ascites we found and lower abdominal wall nodules were also found, okay? So we see all the kinds of involvement here, typical case. Now on the fourth case, we see unusual sites. So unusual sites, we see L3, L4 vertebra were involved. These vertebral bodies were involved. Now case five, now this case five, we saw the left external iliac lymph nodes are there with omental nodules. Multiple omental nodules were present with uh, involving the liver surface as well. Involving the liver surface with, we saw moderate ascites with bilateral pleural effusion also. And then uh, unusual sites were right psoas muscle was involved. And uh, yeah, right psoas muscle was involved. Iliacus paraspinal lesions were also seen. Adrenal gland lesions were also seen. Sixth case. Now this case was also uh, typical. Like we saw here, left uh, adrenal gland lesion, large left adrenal gland lesion, it was found. And then uh, enlarged presacral nodes, enlarged presacral nodes with anterior rectal wall, and uh, vault infiltration was also found. Now the results, what, what do we see in results? So out of 30 cases, we saw the highest recurrence was there in like uh, 46 to 50 years, age group followed by 56 to 60, and then it decreased in age group of 51 to 55. So as you know, uh, most common malignancy is serous adenocarcinoma. 
so several unusual sites were also readily recognized uh, and then the usual sites of uh, recurrence so maximum it was local recurrence with uh, nodal involvement followed by nodal involvement uh, nodal also there were abdominal lymph nodes major major and pelvic and distant nodes also with peritoneal or mental invo involvement scoring the highest percentage here now recurrence at unusual sites were seen in maximum most uh, most of the part liver then comes to brain spleen lungs adrenals ureters etc so 18 to 30 18 out of 30 patients were followed up with pet ct in our institute and both the results were almost comparable now statistical analysis we see so peritoneal and uh, mental involvement were the most while um, the bone involvement and um, the pleural thickening was least as we saw it involved the l3 l4 vertebra in case 3 now usual um, basically combined sites were involved the most in uh, recurrence coming to age distribution we know that the age distribution highest was 46 to 50 years followed by the least was 79 to 80 years in very old age, old age group or a very young age group 10 to 15 years histopathological distribution as we said we had serious adenocarcinoma majoring most of the part then next comes neuroendocrine tumor of the ovary are uh, followed by germ cell tumor lymph nodal involvement distribution we saw there are uh, no lymph nodes involvement in most of the cases and in few cases they were combined all the peritoneal deposits with along with the lymph nodes after that followed by abdominal lymph nodes were commonly involved now with or without lymph nodes uh, the recurrent lesion was there in 54 percentage of uh, uh, the study with recurrent lymph nodes being about 36 percent and only nodal involvement were there in around 10 percent of the study group coming to type of surgery so the type of surgery will also have an effect so uh nct plus cyto reduction was given in 56 percent and the th uh, th plus uh bilateral salpingo oophorectomy with omentectomy was done in two percent so this is how you see the relapse in all these cases effect of chemotherapy has a real nice effect 86 percent along with the surgery and uh Number of sites involved in 92% were multiple. Uh, multiple sites were involved, uh, like the local involvement, the nodal involvement, the peritoneal involvement, association of surface deposits and ascites was also seen. So ascites with no surface deposits was seen in 16% of the study group. Surface deposits but no ascites was also seen in 26%. In 34%, we did not see any deposits along with the ascites. A comparative study was also done. So we, as we know, there were uh, more peritoneal and nodal in, uh, mental involvement. And least being the bone, muscles, or uh, pleural thickening. Now, the conclusions we made from the study were the metastatic pattern of relapsed ovarian carcinoma in the, in the present study shows peritoneal nodules as the most commonly involved site. So, with CT, uh, with the enhanced contrast study, we saw excellent resolution to evaluate the characteristic features of various sites and appearance of metastatic lesions. In the present study, presence of recurrent disease at unusual site was found to be high, highest in liver and bubble. Present study also showed the number of sites involved, multiple sites involved with uh, nodal involvement, with or without nodal involvement. So these are my references. I made the study 